Hi everybody, I'm here with Platinus occidentalis, the American sycamore. This is one of the favorite trees in my neighborhood in southwestern uh, Massachusetts, in western New England. Uh, this is in Great Barrington on State Highway Route 7, as you can tell. One of the busiest roads in western Massachusetts by far. So we really could not even pick a, a better time of day uh, without it being the middle of the night. And I want you to see this tree. This is, uh, again, Platinus occidentalis, uh, the American sycamore. It's also called the buttonwood or the button ball tree. The fruit of this species is, forms kind of like a tight little spherical cluster, which is quite like what uh, colonial buttons would be like. You push it through the buttonhole and you have a ball on the other side. It's about that size, three quarters of an inch to an inch, something like that. It's superior wood. Uh, and unfortunately, this tree's kind of fallen out of favor when it comes to landscapes and community plantings because it's afflicted by a disease called anthracnose. It's a fungal pathogen that causes defoliation, but it rarely causes death. It's just unsightly and it kind of freaks people out. So it's not planted nearly as often as the hybrid between uh, Platinus occidentalis and Platinus orientalis, which is the Asian. There's also some more, some back crossing in there as well, but long story short, there's a, there's a cross called the London plane tree, Platinus X acerifolia, which is uh, used more often as a street tree. And they are both superior street trees. Like many lowland species, in other words, this tree likes bottom, bottom woodlands, uh, where it wet feet, but that's a low oxygen environment, right? So like the American elm, the cottonwoods, the river birch, these are all trees that can tolerate low oxygen situations and therefore compacted soils and urban environments. That's why you find the sycamore and the London plain planted so often in urban settings and in community forestry. Superior tree. This one is massive here, but it's nowhere near the size of the one that's in Sunderland, Massachusetts. You should look that one up. It's affectionately called the button ball tree. I think it's got its own Wikipedia page. So it's uh, uh, really got this unique exfoliating bark. And it's interesting that the, the reason that it does that is because of the inherent uh, inability of this tree's bark to expand and infill as do the species of many other trees. So what happens instead is that this, this stretches and the, the bark just falls off instead as it's replaced by the newer growth. Very unique look uh, shared by not too many species. This plant is uh, indigenous to Eastern North America all the way from Ontario down to Northeastern Mexico and well west of the Mississippi into the Midwest. Uh, in the Cretaceous period and the tertiary period, way, way, way back prehistoric dinosaur times, it was uh, indigenous to Europe and especially Greenland and Arctic North America, but now its, it's range has shrunk back to uh, this neighborhood and generally Eastern North America. Uh, Platinus occidentalis, awesome tree, one of my favorites. I was fortunate enough to be able to be there when one had to come down years ago and I ended up having some kitchen counters made out of it. Beautiful, beautiful lumber. And I, But at the same time, please don't go taking down this tree just for the lumber. There's not enough of them around. And uh, appreciate it when you see it. This one is here in broad daylight on Route 7 in Great Barrington in Western Massachusetts. It's so big that if you blink, you might not see it, but it's worth a trip to come and say hi and give it a hug. Thanks for your interest.